Hello everyone. Welcome to Engineered Learnings. Engineered Learnings has been created as an effort to help and reach out to all the engineering students, aspirants and professionals out there with the basic understanding and the crux of the topics important for placements, vivas, semesters, competitive examinations and all types of interviews. So let's go to today's topic. Welcome everyone. Today's topic is uh, a very important topic that uh, students face a lot of problems in. Uh, that is the petrochemical industry. Now, when we talk of industries, this industry is a very prolific industry because it is serving to produce the monomers for the polymer industry. Supposedly, you will uh, produce polyethylene, so you need ethylene for that purpose. You need to produce polypropylene. Uh, you need propylene for that purpose, so you need to break the higher carbon compounds that is C7, C8, C9 to lower carbon compounds that is C2, C3 in the E form to produce monomer for the polymer industry. So now proceeding towards the entire setup for the petrochemical industry. This is the Kellogg technology, we have only discussed the Kellogg technology here and uh, let us now uh, proceed forward to what is exactly happening. So the feed that is being uh, given here along with steam is uh, C7, C8, C9, C10 that is heavy naphtha. So my feed is heavy naphtha. Heavy naphtha plus steam is deliberately fed in to the tube steel heater wherein the residence time is kept high so that uh, it passes through the tubes to get heated and broken and cracked into lower products that is C7, C8 and C9 getting broken to C2, C3, C4 primary. This is our purpose for the uh, petrochemical industry. So this is serving as my feed, heavy naphtha, which has been broken into C2, C3, C4 by passing through the tube stillator and allowing enough residence time in the tube stillator for ensuring cracking of the materials. So what, uh, why is steam deliberately fed? It will take a sufficient amount of space, so why waste the space? Rather than feeding only the heavy naphtha, why is steam deliberately fed? This is a common question that comes. And there is an answer to it. So what happens is, when this steam and feed passes through the tubes of the tube steel heater, there is the tubes of the tube steel heater and here is the radiation source. So when the energy goes to the tubes and it gets enough time to crack, it often happens so that heavy products, heavy carbon products are formed which is forming a deposit on the walls of the tube steel heat, on the walls of the tubes. So what happens is, it will, this will form a carbon crust on the inner surface of the tubes and will prevent the heat from flowing from the radiation source to the C7, C8, C9 in the tubes. So they will not crack properly, red hot spots will be generated, steam is deliberately fed to actually undergo steam reforming of this hard carbon that is formed due to cracking. So hard carbons are deposited in the tubes which are further steam cracked due to the del deliberate fe feeding of steam and finally cracked products that is carbon plus steam forming carbon monoxide plus hydrogen. This goes out as gas. So this carbon crust is removed and it does not affect the heat transfer. That is why steam is deliberately fed into the, uh, in, into the uh, inlet stream to the tube steel heater. Now from the tube steel heater as we can realize there will be several number of products due, due to cracking. From C1 to C10 everything will be present because there will be some amount of C7, C8, C9, C10 unreacted as well. So C1 to C10 everything will be present. So cracked products plus unreacted reactants will be present here. So C1 to C10 is everything is present into the, in this thing. Now if due to some, uh, in, the, in the cracking process, if some heavier products are formed, that is beyond C10, supposedly C11 or C12 that can be separated as fuel oil, it, it can be separated here as fuel oil. So the heavier products that are formed in the process are separated here. So what goes here? is basically C1 to C6 supposedly. 
C7, C8, C9 is further separated from the spool oil and are transferred back to the feed stream, recycled back to the feed stream. That is C7, C8, and C9 is separated. And sent back to the feed stream. Now what happens is C1 to C6 goes here. C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6. It goes into the compressor, into the, into the cooler, cooler compressor. That is, it will cool down and its temperature will decrease. Here are the liquid products, that is mine. C5 and C6 would be primarily separated. Maybe some amount of C4 as well and some amount of water as well. From here it passes on to 10, that is my distillation column, wherein if any C4 is present along with C5 and C6 or any lower products, that is uh, lighter product is present, it will go from top and gasoline, that is primarily C5 and C6, will be separated from water. So what survives is C1 to C4 after separation through this third uh, liquid separator and along with that some acid gases that are produced due to the steam reforming process. If some sulfur is present in the feedstock, then H2 will combine with the sulfur to form H2S further. This is also an acid gas. So CO, H2, H2S, all of these are present and these has to be separated. So when it is separated, from 4 what comes out is nothing but pure C1 to C4 along with hydrogen. Because only acid gases CO and H2S are separated, hydrogen is not separated here. So C1 to C4 and hydrogen is present from 4 to 5. As it enters 5, what happens is C1 to C4 are cooled by casket pulling, that is why I have written CC casket cooling process is followed which will be discussed later casket cooling process is followed to cool down this uh, C1 to C4 and convert C1 to C4 into liquid and this is the feed of the B methanizer that is C1 to C4 in completely liquid state C1 to C4 in liquid state is serving as the feed to seven that is my demethanizer what remains is h2 and along with that some impurities of acid gases may be present which is further separated in six and acid gases gets removed if any uh, other materials are present they are separated and pure h2 that is pure h2 is collected here so c1 to c4 in the liquefied stage goes in the demethanizer wherein the pressure is slightly depressed. As soon as the pressure is slightly depressed, what happens is C1 being having a tendency of getting converted into vapor readily, it, it converts into vapor. Whereas C2 to C4 remain as liquid. So the tail gas that comes out is nothing but CHO or methane gas. From therein, it will move to 8, which is mine. C2 to C4 in the liquid state will move to 8 because C1 is removed as tail gas from demethanizer. This is the, my demethanizer. From here on, in 8, this is serving as my deethanizer, where from my C2 is removed by again depressing the pressure slightly. And when we depress the pressure slightly such that C3 and C4 remain as liquid, but C2 easily being converted into vapor. So C2 goes here. And what remains is C3 and C4 in liquid state. It goes into 9. So what happens to the C2? C2 is present in in I and N form that is ethane, ethane and ethene form but we need ethene for the polymer industry that is polyethylene to make polyethylene so what we do is we deliberately as you see we deliberately feed in some hydrogen from the purified hydrogen we collected here due to steam reforming the hydrogen that was formed we collected it here we supply it deliberately here to convert the iron form to the in form that is my ion will be converted to N, but my in will not be converted to N. So what remains is after this uh, 
normalize with H2, what remains is C2 in only in and n form. That is, I am being converted into E. So now we get more E product that is ethyne, ethene, ethylene that is ethylene or ethene. Now ethylene or ethene is separated from the top, being lighter, and ethane is separated from the bottom of 12 and send it to the feed of heavy metal. Because it has no use in the polymer industry. It is sent back to the feedstock. Now ethylene is sent to the polymer industry. That is, I'm writing as PI, polymer industry. Now let's come here. C3 and C4 as liquid. C2 has been removed. C3 and C4 as liquid. Again we de decrease in the flash separator. Again we decrease the pressure. Now C3 being the lighter gas will convert into gas. So this is C3. That is propene, propylene and propane. Prop will be separated and what will remain is C4 with some higher products maybe some traces of C5 and C6 that might have escaped from here and gone into C1 plus three, C1 to C4 combination maybe some traces of C5 and C6 what will be the fate of C, this C3 prop that is ion in and in again we will like to convert ion to in that is propylene for the polypropylene industry now we mix it with the purified hydrogen here to convert it into in and in form deliberately now this in is separated from the bottom and in is separated from the top and this goes to the polymer industry now this propane we couldn't show it here but this propane goes back to the feedstock now this in and in we have separated now what happens is what 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 becomes the fate of this uh, remaining C4, C5, C6? It goes to the debutanizer, where from the C4 is separated as the top product, and gasoline, if present, is in traces is separated from the bottom. So this is the fate. Now you can question, and a question that generally arises is why is this? C4 not being treated with hydrogen, why don't we convert the ion to be converted into in? We do not want that because we know that in C4, the form that we require for the polymer industry is 1,3-butadiene. Now there are two double bonds you can see. There are two double bonds maybe. So what we do is, if we try to convert the ion to in, it may happen so that one of the double bonds will open up to be converted into in form. So we do not want that. We want the B13-butadiene to remain as 13-butadiene. But we want the conversion of ion to in, but we cannot do it because there is a fear of this in to get converted into in. So what we do is, we do not treat it with hydrogen. Instead of the fact that I has to be converted to E, but we fear that E can be converted to M. So we do not want the breakage of the double bond. We want it for the rubber industry. That is why we do not treat this C4 with hydrogen. We obtain it as 1,3-butadiene and we send it to the polymer industry. We send it to the polymer industry. And the rest goes into gasoline C5 and C6, C6 present in traces. So this is the uh, petrochemical industry, this is my depropanizer, this is my deethanizer, this is my debutanizer and this is my demethanizer. So from where the methane is separated, the demethanizer, from where in the ethane is separated, deethanizer, from where in the propane is separated, depropanizer and finally the debutanizer, from where in the C4 is separated. And we thus obtain the pure forms that is propylene, ethylene and the 1,3-butadiene for the rubber industry, for the uh, polymer industry, respectively. So that is it for today. If you like the explanation, then hit the like, comment, subscribe and uh, spread it to other two students. Thank you.